Samuel Moore Walton, an American original. I want to extend uh, a welcome to all of Sam Walton's friends and associates who've uh, joined us today for this memorial service. Uh, Sam was very uh, correctly identified recently as an American original, and he truly was uh, original in uh, most things that, uh, that, that he ever did. One of the things that, uh, that he thought about, and he had opinions on everything, was the fact that he didn't want any of us who cared so much about him to mourn his passing. Uh, he instead wanted, if we had a memorial service, to, uh, to have a celebration. And those of us who, uh, who feel the pain today of the loss of someone that we love so much may have trouble uh, making this memorial service a celebration, and I must confess for my part in it, I'm not all that sure what a memorial service really should consist of. But to the extent that we can, we need to, uh, to, to follow Sam's wishes today. Now, he, he loved all kinds of things. He, uh, he particularly loved to sing. I don't know how many of you in this audience may know that, but he did. And uh, in fact, there have been many a Saturday morning meeting where we had singing contests. Sam had a particular burden with, <laughs> with his group. We would departmentalize our singing efforts, and the executive department, which is he, he, it was his department. He had people like Paul Carter and Don Sodaquist and myself to, uh, to help make up that quartet and try as he might. He couldn't carry the other three of us, but we still competed and uh, usually finished last in the voting, but it was fun. But Sam loved to sing, and so he had particular music that he liked, and we're going to, uh, to try to do the the songs in this in this service today that Sam would like to have heard. And then he said, if, uh, if we could just assemble a few of the people who were particularly close to him, who knew him well, and, and let them say a few words about him, maybe uh, uh, tell a funny story about uh, something that, that happened to them with Sam, or uh, an experience they had, or a thought that they had, or an observation they had, and let let each of them talk for a few minutes, and, uh, and in, his, his, in his instructions, he underlined short comments in, uh, in his uh, inimitable way. But uh, let's, let's start uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this service today by asking one of our, uh, one of our associates, Helena uh, Gaddison, to... Uh, to lead us in singing God Bless America. And just before Helena starts, I've got to tell you that I've gone to a lot of Sam's Wholesale Club openings, Al Johnson, in the last few years. And one of the things that would almost always happen, Helen, at a, at a Sam's Wholesale Club opening, before that evening ceremony was over, Sam would be on the stage with the microphone, and all of our potential member customers who had assembled there, and in most cases it was thousands, he would insist and make all of them join in singing God Bless America, and he loved to lead that, he loved to do it, and the crowd loved it, and our, our member uh, uh, customers have appreciated it so much. So uh, if you will, Helena, get us started, and then uh, we'll join in. White with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Everyone, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. 
From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with Another of Sam's favorite songs that uh, that he wanted to make sure we that that we did at this uh, service was one that's a little bit up tempo when the saints go marching in, and let's all join in on this as well. If Sam were here, you all who know him, like I do, know that he would admonish you. That was a pretty poor effort on your part to sing along. <laughs> uh, I suspect what he would do is make you do it again till you got it right. But uh, in the interests of, uh, of proceeding, uh, Paul Carter, would you lead us in prayer? Before the prayer today, I'd like to share a favorite poem of mine. I do not know the author. If I did, I would like to thank him. God said, build a better world. And I said, how? The world is such a cold, dark place, and it's so complicated now. And I'm so young and useless, there's nothing that I can do. But God, in all his wisdom, said, just build a better you. When I think about Mr. Sam, he was always looking for ways to build a better you. He was always thinking and studying and challenging. Not only was he doing that for himself, but he was constantly teaching and admonishing all of us to do the same. Shall we pray? Dear 
God, you created a, a beautiful world. You've blessed it by giving us, Mr. Sam, to be a part of this world. We pray a, a blessing of comfort upon Helen and Rob and John, Jim and Alice, and on Bud and, and all the family. We pray a blessing upon us, those of friends and associates and partners that have come to love and to appreciate him. God, we appreciate the, you allowing him to show us what it means to be a servant leader as he has blessed us and blessed those that he's come in contact with. We pray that his influence will live on and on. And we pray that your teachings and those of his will help us to build a better world. Our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, two special friends of uh, Sam's Bill and Hillary Clinton. Helen, Bud, Alice, and Rob, Jim, and John. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for Hillary and for me to be here to celebrate our friendship, our association, and our gratitude for the contributions that Sam Walton made to our lives and to our state. We thought about his admonition not to be uh, solemn. I even got up this morning on very little sleep and less voice and spent 10 minutes looking for a tie that Sam Walton would have picked for me to wear to this occasion. And unfortunately, I didn't buy this one at Walmart, but it seemed so appropriate I wore it anyway. It has birds and balls on it. For a man who loved bird hunting even better than selling one more product, the only person I ever knew that held a corporate stockholders meeting in a basketball arena. I also want to acknowledge uh, the presence here of our two senators and Congressman Hammersmith. We had the president here a few days ago for a guy who prided himself on being a conservative who never wanted anything from the government. He sure stirred up a lot of politicians. And I can't help but saying that even though Sam didn't much like to be involved with the government, Hearing all this music, it reminds me that there's one, since he had an opinion on utterly everything, I wish he'd left us his view and vote for the government's benefit on which Elvis stamp should be selected. <laughs> I want to say on behalf of the state three things that I am grateful for. First, in late 1984 or three, Sam Walton began to be worried about the loss of American jobs and jobs in this state overseas and about the impact that the attempt to give high quality and low cost goods to people might have on the ability of the people who shop at Walmart to have good jobs. And he started what became an unbelievably successful program to buy more American products and keep the customers of Walmart working in good jobs. It all began with a meeting in the governor's mansion that I will never forget, and neither should his fellow Arkansans. Second, I'll never forget that in the last several years, when he could have been doing so many other things, and when he and Helen had earned a well-deserved rest, he decided finally to immerse himself in the public affairs and the immense complexities of Arkansas politics as the leader of the Arkansas Business Council. And because of that, and his energy and relentless focus on the need to involve the business community in improving the education of our children and their opportunities. This state is an infinitely better place, and we are able to do government in Arkansas in the best possible way because the business community is a full partner. I don't think it would have happened if Sam Walton hadn't agreed to be chairman of the Arkansas Business Council. And last, I want to thank him just for being himself, and I want to thank all of you 
for staying here. For no other company, I suppose, that ever grew to such greatness would have kept its roots in a little town, in a small state, in a faraway place. That is, Alice never tired of reminding me you cannot reach on the highway. <laughs> or in the air, or by any other known means of human contact. And yet still, all of us are here today in large measure because Sam Walton and his family loved Bentonville and Benton County and this state. And that means more to me, perhaps, than all the other things combined. And now, I'd like for Hillary to close with a personal reminiscence, but before I do, let me tell you that I did have one unique experience with Sam Walton that no one else could have had because I just happened to be there then. He was sitting in my office in October of 1987 when the stock market fell and the market closed on that day and he walked out and found out what the market closed was. He came back in and I said, how much money did you lose today? He said a billion dollars, but it's all paper anyway. <laughs> he, he said, you know people pay way too much attention to the stock market. All I know is we're opening a store in Tennessee tomorrow. I'm going to fly over there and if the people come in and buy, I'll be all right and so will America. I hope you'll never forget that. I thought to myself, if I'd lost a thousand dollars, I'd be in the under the couch. <laughs> that is a core crystal picture of what made Sam Walton so warm and special in our eyes. I've been thinking a lot about the company and all the extraordinary people who make this company work. And, you know, one of the things that has always motivated our associates has been the annual contest over the item that was going to be picked by Mr. Sam and David and Don and everybody else. And then it was up to the stores to try to figure out who would buy that item. And everybody knows that whatever Sam picked, people pushed a lot harder. I think we have to continue that tradition. I think we every year have to imagine what crazy item would Sam pick this year? And then we have to not only try to do everything we can to beat David Glass, which Sam loved more than anything, but we also have to take it one step further because it's not just an item that I hope we'll pick every year. I think we should consider maybe an attitude as well. You know, maybe this year we ought to really focus on dedication and maybe next year it ought to be optimism, and then the year after that, loyalty. And we ought to every year commit ourselves, as we know Sam has, not only to selling the items, but to conveying the kind of attitudes that has made this company such a joy and such a gift to this country and to all of us. So I'm thinking about the item, and I hope all of you will, and I'm thinking about the attitude, and I think every year that's one of the ways we ought to remind ourselves of what Sam Walton taught each one of us. Another special friend and a man that uh, Sam admired very much, Paul Harvey. Good afternoon, Americans. To Helen with love. My text for today is taken from the back page of your program. You don't have to read it now, but I want you to read it later, and again, and again, and again. For in several sentences is summarized the philosophy which all of us recognize as Sam Walton's. Turning the spotlight on associates. He never said it exactly this way, but the distilled essence of that back page is, if with pleasure you are viewing any work a man is doing, if you like him or you love him, tell him now. He was our encourager 
He was a Barnabas like none other. If with pleasure you are viewing any work a man is doing, if you like him or you love him, tell him now. He taught each of us to be the best that we can be and a little bit better. I'm glad Mr. Sam got to hear some of the applause himself. That those who loved him told him in his time even the chiefest of us all, the President of the United States, though I am sure on a par with that, would have been the wide-eyed adulation of thousands of associates with thousands of voices and thousands of faces who one way or another at one time or another said, Mr. Sam, you made me rich. But more than fame and more than money is a comment, kind and sunny, and the hearty, warm approval of a friend. It gives to life a savor. It makes one stronger, braver. It gives one heart and spirit to the end. And with that philosophy, he led us to the summit of corporate achievement, to where slack-jawed Wall Street had to... Had to had to bow in awe in the direction of this miracle in the Ozarks. Well, Mr. Sam isn't, uh, isn't going to be able directly, personally, to keep us encouraged now, so we're going to have to do that for one another. And I mean in the boardroom and in the stockroom. Let there be no long faces. Sam Walton was a leader worth following because he was following a leader worth following. And I think he would want us to perpetuate that commitment too. To his God, to his family, to his country, and to his business. What do you say? Shall we? I'll try, because I'll tell you something. When that roll is called up yonder, I hope I can hear from the other side of the gate a familiar voice saying, give me a W, give me an A, give me an L, and then I'll know I'm in the right place. Sam Walton, thanks for all you meant to us and still do. Thank you, Paul. Has there ever been a Walmart meeting of this magnitude, this type group assembled, if Sam were here, that we wouldn't have had a Walmart cheer? Can you do a Walmart cheer at a memorial service? If it's Sam Walton's, you can. Walmart Associates, let's just do it. Let's show everyone how. On your feet. <clears throat> Give me a W. Give me an A. Give me an L. Give me a squiggly. Give me an M. Give me an A. Give me an R. Give me a T. What's that spell? Can't hear you. Thank you very much. He would have liked that one. Uh, Jim Walton, I don't want to impose, but I heard Jim read a composition that uh, reflects the family's thoughts about Sam, and if Jim will do it, it's sensational. Please read it for this group today, Jim, if you would. These are remembrances of our father. You've got to stay flexible was one of our dad's favorite sayings and his full and rewarding life that has touched so many people is a testimony to one flexible person. We never went on a family trip nor have we ever heard of a business trip in which the schedule wasn't changed at least once after the trip was underway. 
We all snickered at some writers that uh, viewed Dad as a grand strategist that intuitively developed complex plans and saw them implemented with precision. <laughs> Dad thrived on change. No decision was sacred, and we can recall only a very few times where he made a decision that wasn't changed to some degree later. Our father was a study of contrast. His patience with us and all our missteps and mistakes is hard for us to imagine. We knew he would always love us and be glad to see us however far we strayed. He taught us by example instead of telling us what to do. Dad made every, made every person he talked to feel so special. On the other hand, Dad could be impatient. When he wanted to get somewhere, you couldn't stop him even if the car broke down or the plane engines wouldn't stop or wouldn't start. We also recall Dad getting awfully impatient to go to bed from 8 o'clock in the night on each evening, regardless of the occasion. Dad could be very focused and at other times unfocused. He focused on people and retailing. He could easily talk to anybody regardless of who they were or what they did. He did many special things for people in need from notes or phone calls of encouragement to financial assistance. Dad was a merchant and was always learning everything he could about what merchandise people were interested in buying. In contrast, we would have to describe Dad as unfocused when it came to driving, <laughs> to flying, <laughs> keeping up with his yellow notepads, and his glasses. Henry Hinks, Dr. Henry Hinks and number 22 Walmart glasses were lost at an amazing rate. Dad was a competitor. He loved the mornings and he thrived on action. Visiting stores was a family ritual. The miniaturization of tape recorders allowed him to hide the device in his pocket and to take one of us children or a Walmart associate with him into a competitor's store and carry on a 30-minute conversation about merchandise, displays, and prices. <laughs> he was an avid tennis player and quail hunter. Our family camping vacations were a very special time for us. They were the highlight of our childhood, a time to see different parts of this great country, to play together, work together, have our disagreements, and work them out, meet other families, and of course, see a lot of stores. Once we got to our campsite and the tent was set up and things unpacked, we would ask Dad if we could go do something. His response was always the same, do whatever you're big enough to do. Thanks, Jim. A hymn that uh, Sam suggested we, uh, we include is a beautiful song, and uh, Helena, if you will, please do that for us now. I 
the first to fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Most of you have heard the Walmart story many times. Our associates know it well. Walmart is a company made up of many associates, many partners. From the very beginning when Sam and Bud started the company, they always believed that everyone in the company should be partners, that that was far preferable to any employer-employee relationship and we've all been partners together in various ways over the years. Sam loved all the associates in Walmart, loved visiting with them, but he particularly loved those who worked out in our operating units, the Walmart stores, the wholesale clubs, those that had the direct contact with the customer. And he liked nothing better than to go out and visit with those people. And time and time again, many of you, most of you have heard him say, those are the people who are Walmart. They're the heart and soul of our company, and we need to support them. We're fortunate to have today one of the Walmart associates that I think epitomizes Sam's idea of that associate out there who served our customers. She started... I guess helped open store number two in Harrison, Arkansas. Uh, spent something over 20 years with us, retired, and after a brief retirement, decided that she needed to, or I think we persuaded her to come back, and she was the door greeter for another period of time till she retired again about five years ago. She's a typical, though, Walmart associate who serves our customers so well. Gracie, McCutcheon from Harrison, Arkansas. Gracie, come on up. Gracie, you knew the chairman well and uh, have visited with him on many occasions. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to share with this group about uh, your association with the chairman? There's a lot of things I could say about Mr. Walton. Uh, a lot of good things because I loved him and I can't recall the first time I met him but when we started that store in 64 uh, he just had two stores at that time that was the second one and he was over there quite a bit and I got to know him pretty well and I always enjoyed his visits and he was a caring man he was an honest man he built that store on honesty David when he came over there looking for a building to put this story in. He met up with an honest man over there, Mr. Jonas, and they talked and, and agreed on what they would do. And Mr. Jonas said, do you want a written contract? And Mr. Walton said, your word's good enough for me. We stayed in that store about three or four years without a written contract. Two honest men met. <laughs> and, uh, everything went real smooth. And he built his company on that, on honesty. And uh, uh, I wish I could remember it was the first time I met him, but I can't. But I do know I got real well acquainted with him during those first years. And it was, David, that wasn't easy, uh, that opening that store, as you well know. <laughs> hey, I gotta, I gotta tell you all that uh, somebody <laughs> slipped one time and wrote that horrible article about my impressions of the Harrison store, and Gracie came looking for me. Uh, I sure did. <laughs> I thought I was in real trouble, and uh, and I'm just now beginning to get back on your good side, Gracie. I wasn't sure that I should come up here today if yeah. you were going to yeah. question me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Walton was a kind man. He was kind to everybody. And he made you feel so good when he came in the store. He was also a friendly man. He made friends wherever he went. He had a lot of friends in Harrison. 
Sometimes he'd get old Roy in his pickup, come over and go bird hunting with somebody. One day I looked up the aisle, and there was Mr. Walton in his shorts and his T-shirt. He was going over to float on the Buffalo River for that day. He said, I didn't think anybody would recognize me if I came in here looking like this. <laughs> uh, his, his policy was, the customer is always right. Sometimes I had a little problem with that. When, <laughs> when I knew the customer was trying to cheat us, that was kind of hard for me to say, say that it's always right. But I learned to do it. He was right about that. The customer's always right. We had a lot of them. And uh, he had a lot of vision. He could see on them. He, he'd always want things a little bigger and a little better. He wasn't, he would criticize sometimes, but his criticism was constructive. It wasn't harsh and putting you down. It was helping you. And he always had the welfare of his associates at heart. He didn't forget to share his wealth with the people he worked with. And uh, one thing I admired about him, when he got rich and famous, he didn't move off to some big city. He stayed up here in this beautiful state of Arkansas, in the northwest corner <laughs> where he'd always lived. And in all the years I knew him, he didn't change like that. He was just Mr. Walton like he was when I first knew him. Uh, I think my life has been enriched to meet a man like Mr. Walton and be able to work with him and for him for 22 years, off and on. <laughs> last few, <clears throat> the last few years I just worked part time. Uh, and I always thought, if you have something nice to say about somebody, say it to them while they're living. And in, I think about 1975 or 6, I wrote this little poem for Mr. Walton, and I'd like to read it. There's a man who comes to our store once or twice a year. He never stays so very long, but he always brings good cheer. He looks to the future and has plans that he presents. He's the founder of our company, the Walmart Discount Store. The first one in 1962 to 130 or more. Also, although he is the big boss, he was always just the same. He was nice and friendly and could call most everyone by name. It doesn't matter if your hands are dirty or your hair is out of place. He greeted you with an outstretched hand and a smile upon his face. He appreciated our efforts and the small jobs we attend. He makes us feel important. We love him as a friend. He seemed to work untiringly and never stopped to rest of all the men who came to our store. Mr. Walton, you're the best. Thank you, David. Well, Sam touched a lot of lives. And there are so many of our associates like Gracie who are the real key to Walmart's success. They're the ones who have made it work over the years. And I think all of you can see what we mean. Uh, thinking uh, just for a moment about Sam he, and, and the poem that Gracie wrote because she cared. Uh, every week when, uh, when Sam went out to the stores, he would come in with a collection of poems principally, or uh, something like that, that associates in the store would give him. Uh, he, had, uh, he had asked that this one be shared in uh, this service, and then in his, in his writing he said, if time permits, but I think we need to take the time. But uh, one of our associates, uh, a young lady named Sue Pigman in uh, Ashland, Kentucky, uh, wrote this, <coughs> and uh, and I would, uh, would like to share it for you today. The, it's entitled, Walmart Sighted in Heaven. I dreamed that I died and stood at the pearly gate. St. Peter said, I'm busy, just take a seat and wait. 
Being quite inquisitive, I decided to explore when suddenly I was startled by a loud and joyous roar. I wandered forward to get a look and see what I could hear. There was Mr. Sam leading the Walmart cheer. I'm pleased as I can be that you invited me here today. I see you've already learned a lot of the Walmart way. Angel harps on special, wing cleppers on the shelf, polish for the golden streets, why you've outdone yourself. You'll keep these people happy, that's one thing I know, so there shouldn't be a problem beating competition down below. I need to take a little trip, but you continue with your mirth. It's time to check the parking lots of all my stores on earth. With that, he hopped aboard a cloud, and the angels cleared the way as he, start, as he darted all about in his own erratic way. When the alarm went off and I awoke, I felt the strangest thing. I could have sworn my face was touched by the tip of an angel's wing. Sue Pigman, Ashland, Kentucky. There's so many stories about uh, about Sam. We could uh, we could get up here, uh, Helen, I guess, and tell them for days. Uh, most of them true. Uh, some have been embellished over the years, but uh, that's all part of the fun of the telling. Uh, deciding what uh, what to share with this group and uh, and 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 what you don't have time to share is difficult. Uh, I've had so many uh, wonderful experiences with Sam myself, going back to when I met him in 1964 at that Harrison store opening. Uh, I, I, I would, I'm tempted to tell you the, uh, the story about Sam doing the hula on Wall Street. You've, you've seen the uh, video of it and you've read the news accounts. Uh, Helen was there and she knows what all went on, but few people know the behind the scenes story, Helen, and I suppose someday we ought to tell that. Uh, but traveling with Sam was, was a unique experience. No trip was ever alike. Uh, traveling with Sam and his bird dogs together was a new experience not only for me, but for lots of other folks who came in contact with us. Uh, uh, and I, but I suppose, thinking about uh, what Jim read, uh, the, Sam's flying was not as bad as people portray it. He was actually a a good pilot, and he probably had as many hours in the air as most of our pilots who fly our airplanes today, Rob. Uh, he told me always that the thing he did best was land the airplane, which was comforting. Uh, <laughs> and he prided himself on that. But the thing that he, that Sam didn't do well at all, and this, this man had so many fantastic qualities, all of us should emulate many of them, but the thing that, that he just couldn't do at all, bud, was drive. <laughs> you really took your life in your hands, and I would share with you one quick story about Sam's driving and an adventure with Sam. Now, I've been in the car or truck with Sam in three different accidents. <laughs> uh, I quit driving with him after that. But I, I'm serious, I've been in three accidents, but I, this, this story is, is not embellished, and I will tell you about one day that, that Sam and I were to go to the opening of the Sam's Wholesale Club in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we were supposed to be there early that morning, and we went out to, we got up and we uh, showed up at the airport, and we'd had a terrible ice storm, and uh, the airplanes had ice on the wings, the uh, runway out there had ice on it, and they said, the weather's too bad to fly, so Sam says, no problem, we'll take my old truck and drive. That was a tip-off because if it's too, the weather's too bad to fly, I'm not sure about driving, but we started off in his truck, Sam driving, and it was slick. Fortunately, there were no cars on the road. He drove about 70, 75 miles an hour, just keeping it barely between the ditches on both sides. We... Uh, we uh, stopped at one point. I was so nervous that I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. Uh, we stopped at one point, and he said, you drive for a while. And I said, okay. <clears throat> I got in, tickled to death. I was driving about 40. We hadn't gone five miles till he said, we're never going to get there this way. He said, let me drive again. Uh, we, uh, we made a little detour. <clears throat> 
couple of blocks out of her way on the way over there, and he said, I need to buy some gas, and I said, we got plenty to go to Wichita, and he said, well, I owe this guy a favor. He said, I was over here last week in a rental car. I stopped there to use the phone and to get some gas as a convenience store. I put the, the nozzle in the tank and put it on automatic, you know, the way those things work, went inside, got on the phone, talked to whoever it was. When I finished, the thing had stopped. I paid the guy, went out and left, forgot to take the gas hose out, and it pulled the canopy down. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I really felt bad. said, I apologized, and uh, said, it sure messed up that rental car, too. <laughs> but he said, I, uh, I need to trade with that guy whenever we can. So <clears throat> we pulled into this convenience store in that old beat-up truck, which... Uh, you know, it looked like it, it looked like the compactor just missed. <laughs> and uh, this is this is the first time ever that uh, that I have been served, uh, not self service, but full service by a convenience store operator. He saw <laughs> he saw us getting out of that truck, and he saw Sam. <laughs> he came out and pumped the gas, and uh, he wouldn't let us touch anything. We got we got back in the in the truck. Uh, Rob stopped at Ark City on the way, as he would typically do. He'd been after us for a while to find a location for a store in Ark City, and the real estate division hadn't come up with one. We were there about an hour and a half, and he'd, he made a deal with people there for an Ark City location, and that's where we built our store that, uh, that next year. But we made a deal for a new Walmart location on the way, arrived in Wichita in one piece in time for the opening. So when we get there, and we park on the parking lot of the Wichita store. I went in, I got on the phone, I called the office, and I said, I don't know what it takes to de-ice airplanes or to de-ice runways, but, but there better be an airplane up here tonight to take us home. I'm not, I'm not going back in that truck. And uh, I don't remember who I ran into inside Sam's, but, uh, but about the first one I hit volunteered to drive that truck back, and Sam and I did come back on the airplane that night. And that's the last time I ever went out on the road with him. I drove with him a little in town, and his driving got progressively worse, Helen, as he was unfocused, as Jim says. But we've all had a lot of fun and a lot of experiences with him, and we could, we could tell the stories forever, I guess. Uh, but why don't we uh, right now hear a few of the words uh, uh, from the chairman himself? Samuel Moore Walton, an American original. The son of a Depression-era farm mortgage banker, Sam, as he insisted on being called, grew up in the same heartland area where he lived his American dream. And what a passion it was. Raised during hard times, he became driven by something inside that demanded self-improvement each and every day. His personal dedication led him to championship performances in high school sports, class president his senior year, and the youngest Eagle Scout in the state of Missouri. After earning a degree in economics at the University of Missouri, Sam earned an $85 a month salary as a J.C. Penney trainee, along with a keen appreciation for retailing. World War II kept Sam stateside serving in the Army Intelligence Corps. During active duty, he married Helen Robson, a college acquaintance and daughter of a prominent Oklahoma banker. They would continue living their small town roots, raising four children, and developing the most successful retailing venture in American history. The couple's dedication to hard work and traditional values were an omnipresent part of the message that took Walmart from an idea to America's most admired retailing company. I personally would like to see many of our people settle down in Walmarts like Bentonville, Arkansas, for instance, or Neosho, Missouri, They'd be or, or Fayetteville, Arkansas, and, uh, and, and plant their roots and become members of the Chamber of Commerce and become the church of their choice, uh, the Rotary Club and get their home paid for and become uh, leaders in their community. Realizing the importance of his people to Walmart's success, 
Sam empowered his associates from all levels with company information that many companies never show their general managers. It was, and is, a partnership where we, us, and our have always been the operative words. Sam's simple explanation was, if people believe in themselves, it's truly amazing what they can accomplish. The bottom line is that we made, way back we were somehow developed the formula of how important our hourly associates are for our company. Our company is built on people. Our pro our, the success we've had is because of our people. And I believe that. You believed it from the beginning. All of our associates believe it. We've made partners out of our folks rather than employees. And they know that we've been sincere in trying to share the profits with them. And they, in turn, have worked harder than our competitors. We've kept our prices lower than our competitors' prices. Keeping prices lower than competitors, a simple directive, and the cornerstone of Sam's vision for more than 45 years. And we apply the J.C. Penney principle of saying by hiring the best people we could find, you're in charge of it, you're responsible, it's your store, let's see what you can do with it. That relationship invariably revealed Sam's reluctance to take credit for Walmart's continuing success story. Gosh, I think that's another one of our secrets. You know, we're always asked, why has Walmart been able to do what it's done? Well, it's, it's of course, a, a, a matter of our people and a story of our people, because 75% of what we do has got the credit has to go back to the, to the people within the organization. The most important people in our store are the fo are the, in our company are those folks in the stores, in the distribution centers, uh, all over the company that, that touch base with our customers. We all try hard to make this the best company to work for in the United States of America. And I think with your help, we're gonna have the greatest retail company for the next 25 years that uh, this United States has ever seen. I get a lot of credit for a lot of things that our folks do, and I, uh, I wish the spotlight could be turned on them individually and collectively because uh, they're the ones that do it for our customers, and they do it every day. Even in accepting the nation's highest civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom from President George Bush, Sam was quick to point out the partnership and the hundreds of thousands of associates that made Walmart the subject of national pride. We're all working together. And I hope we can keep it going that way. That's, that's the secret, that's the key. And if we can, why, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone, not just in America, but we'll give the world a, a, an opportunity to uh, see what it's like to, uh, to, uh, to uh, save and, um, and, and, and do, and do better for, have, have, a, have, a, have a better better lifestyle and a better life, a better life for all. We, uh, we're, we're proud of what we've accomplished. We think we've just begun. Uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming to Arkansas and Mrs. Bush and Sam and your entire entourage. It's, it's the highlight of our entire career my career and I think the entire company. And yet, every day, there were lessons to be learned, problems to conquer, and opportunities to discover. Despite a track record that is the envy of the industry, Sam was never satisfied with how far he or his company had come and spent a great deal of time teaching and nurturing that philosophy of self-improvement to everyone in the Walmart family. Actually, you folks know, most of the company knows, inside the company, and I guess outside the company, realize that this company is managed by a lot of wonderful people. We have support in the stores, we have support in the distribution centers, we have support in the general office, but we have management talent throughout this company to the, greater, the greatest degree of any company I've, I've, ever, I've ever heard of. And, and so uh, I really haven't had that much to do with day-to-day -day operations. 
and I can't take credit for much of the progress that this company has made over the years. I guess I've, 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 I've have contributed in my own way in various, at various times consistently. But uh, the credit for the leadership of this company, the many, prog the, the many uh, improvements that we've made, the great, the great record we've established must go to the people in the stores, must go to our wonderful managers, to all of you assistant managers, and to the leadership team that's been established and developed through the years. I concur completely. The management team that we've got in place today is as good or better than any retail management team that's ever been assembled in the United States of America. And we felt it for a long time that we had a special uh, mission, really, in this, in, in this company of ours to do something for that maybe no one else has been able to do or no one, no one company's been able to accomplish. We know we're a team and we know we, we think we've been good for not just ourselves, our associates, our stockholders, but for those consumers out there. Samuel Moore Walton, devoted to the concepts of sharing, caring, and giving. A lifetime of dedication to excellence and a drive that many can appreciate, but few will achieve. Family man, innovator, visionary, CEO of the decade, sportsman, Medal of Freedom recipient, Samuel Moore Walton, an American original. That was so wonderful, and we have not just videotapes of Sam, but we have what he has instilled in our hearts and in our minds, and we will carry on. An American original, how appropriate. Vibrant, energetic, enthusiastic, motivating, happy. Sam loved life, and Sam loved us. He captured the heart of a nation. He touched the lives of his friends. None of us will ever be the same because he walked at our side. His life has truly made a difference. In the Bible, in Proverbs, we read, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And that was Sam. David said we could have a thousand and one stories told this morning. We could open it up, David, to the group assembled here, and we could get uh, wild and woolly stories and, uh, of Sam and, uh, and Sam's exploits. Each of us have our own special stories. And I'll never forget one. Uh, and it's not humorous, but it tells you about the man and what was important to him. One Saturday morning several years ago, and it was in August, and Forbes had just come out with their list of the wealthiest people in the United States. And Sam uh, stood before our Saturday morning group and said, I just read last night that I'm the wealthiest man in the United States. And he said, I thought about that for a while, and he said, you know what? I am truly the richest man in the United States. And the reason is... I have over 300,000 friends, and that makes me the richest man in the United States. In his own way, Sam was precise as to what it was he wanted done. Yes, he left his notes on a yellow pad, and this is it, of what he wanted to be remembered to you how he wanted to be remembered to you, and how the arrangements which should, should be put together. And the songs that we've sung and will sing are the songs he wanted sung. 
And so we gave, uh, we gave the notes to uh, Becky and asked Becky if she would type them for us. Most normal people wouldn't be able to read Sam's high writing, handwriting. Becky, that doesn't mean you're not normal, uh, but, uh, but uh, I will share with you his comments about you. And I would suggest that if he were sitting across the table from you, this is what he would say to each one of us individually. It should be a joyous time. I am so pleased to have had the wonderful relationships with my associate partners, our customers, and our suppliers. I have been so blessed to have had over 400,000 partners. So for having your affection and your love over these many years, I am so thankful. I've truly been blessed by God. Through this love, caring, and sharing with one another for so many years. Our present servant leaders are so qualified and so steeped in our basic philosophies, along with our letting our partners run and take on more and more responsibilities, that I have no fear that together you'll reach your goals you've set for the 90s and the 21st century. So thanks again, my wonderful friends for being my friend and for my getting to know so many of you. Most of all, I know you share my great joy and pride in what we've accomplished. It's a day to be joyous. And then he gives a list of things that he would like to be considered as far as the final arrangements. And at the end, he says, maybe again, I may get more time than I think. I'd take it. Or complete healing as well. We'll keep fighting. And that's the spirit of Sam. We all have more time. And we, in fact, will keep fighting. I think of the last conversation I had with him, I called a week ago, as a matter of fact, Becky was in, and Becky called to see how Sam was doing in the hospital and talked to Helen, and she came running in in a few minutes, and she said, Don, I've just talked to Sam, and, and it was great to talk to him. And I said, gosh, I would love to talk to him and just see how he's doing. It's, tomorrow's his birthday. Why don't we wait a little bit and try to get him? And so I had a chance to talk with him, and after he said hello and so forth, his first question was, how are sales, Don? And I said, well, Sam, they're a little soft this week. We're going against Easter. We felt pretty good about it, but they, but they were soft. Well, Don, we're going to have to hit it head on. We have more time, and we will keep fighting because that's the legacy that Sam has left for us. We've come to honor Sam, to celebrate his life, to celebrate his accomplishments, However, he would not want us to dwell on that emptiness that hits each and every one of us down deep inside. And it is there. But rather, he would have each of us celebrate the part of him that he left with us. There were so many dimensions to Sam's life, and many have been shared this afternoon. However, I think that it wouldn't be complete without ending with the foundation on which he built his life, the foundation on which he built this company, and that is the Christian principles on which this company was founded. And in closing, I would like to read just a short portion of the 91st Psalm. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because He loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue Him. I will protect Him, for He acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer Him. I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 
With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Sam, we love you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you stand with us now and join in the singing of the first and last verses of Amazing Grace. <clears throat> loved him. He loved all of us. He isn't here physically with us, but he'll always be here with us. He left us so much, and we have so much to be thankful for. He was my friend, and I know he was yours. He still is our friend. Let's treasure forever all that we shared with him. Gordon, would you lead us in our benediction, please? Let us pray. Dear God, as we celebrate the life of our loved one, friend, and co-worker, we lift our hearts grateful for the way your grace shone in his life we thank you, Father, for Sam's zest for living, his love of each new day with its opportunities, for his love of family, for the strong roots he found and cultivated there, for his good stewardship of the gifts with which you blessed him, his use of those gifts in ways that blessed others, for his love of country and of the freedoms that have made our country a beacon for the world and for working to share that spirit of freedom with students from other lands. Finally, Lord, we thank you for his love of you, his claiming your love offered in your son, his faithful devotion to your church, and that in all his life he pointed beyond himself to you as the source of his blessings. Father, hard as it is, we now give our friend back to you entrusting him to your eternal love and mercy, asking today your strength for ourselves and especially for his family. Give them, we pray, peace and good hope. This prayer, Father, and all the prayers of our hearts, we lift in your name. Amen. A special thank you to <clears throat> all of you for coming and, uh, and honoring our friend today. Thank you so much. Samuel Moore Walton, devoted to the concepts of sharing, caring, and giving. A lifetime of dedication to excellence and a drive that many can appreciate, but few will achieve. Family man, innovator, visionary, CEO of the decade, Sportsman, Medal of Freedom recipient, Samuel Moore Walton, an American original.